Um, looks like we have everyone back. Uh, this is in the hearing <clears throat> for Lift Pathways to Renewal, LLC, docket number 22-32602-COM. Uh, we are nearing the end of the technical portion of today's hearing. Um, we just took a break for counsel to confer with his client on um, the late files that we have. Uh, Attorney Rose, do you have any further information in that regard? I do. Um, so we'd like to correct um, the record with respect to an answer that Ms. Dobson gave. It, the, so they have two components to their um, charity care program at the practice currently. And one is a sliding fee discount and the other is entitled scholarship and the scholarship is articulated as being free. And Mary, you can speak to this and I'll have her affirm, but I think she conflated the two. And the answer is that the scholar, that, that she's unaware of the scholarship program actually being used, but the, the, the discounts, the sliding fee discount, um, they have abundant evidence of, and that is frequently utilized. And so we can talk about providing evidence of that. So A, we need to correct the record to reflect that the current scholarship program, the two per quarter, 100% discounted care, uh, to their knowledge is not utilized. But again, the other component is frequently utilized. And Mary, do you want to affirm yeah. or speak to that? Yeah, I, I spoke with Dennis um, uh, and we looked at what's, what we have listed on the website. Uh, we have two different uh, entities. There's a sliding scale program, which is what I was referring to when you were asking me questions about sliding scale and scholarship. Um, the scholarship, the scholarship guidelines are referring to free programming, and the sliding scale uh, framework is um, referring to the discount of for um, individuals within zero to twenty-five thousand um, dollars, a discounted rate of fifty dollars, and twenty-five to um, $50,000, a discount of $75 and 50 to hundred dollars, a discount of $90. Um, so that's, that's the question that I was answering. Yeah. So we apologize for that. And uh, we want to give you an opportunity with that information to ask any follow-up questions that you may have. Cause I think it was Jessica, Jessica, was that your question? Ms. Reibel? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Do you so now now that the answer I think more specifically related to the scholarship program is it hasn't been utilized, um, but also understanding the discount has. Do you have any other follow up questions for Ms. Dobson? Uh, yes. Why has the scholarship program piece never been utilized before? You know, it's 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 listed um, on our paperwork and it's on our website. It's it's you know it's accessible, but it's not something that has a client has not specifically asked for a, a scholarship. Um, so it's it, it has not been utilized. Okay, so that's the only reason it's never been utilized is no one's ever asked to use it. Um. Yes. Thank you. And Attorney Rose, um, is your client able to provide any data um, attesting to the, the, the usage of the sliding scale or are we just going yes. to use her, her statement? Okay. Well, uh, the there is what I understand to be a significant volume the, of of patients. So that's that's uh, the my impression in speaking to Dennis and Mary on the break is that um, that that these are frequently accessed programs uh, that provide the the discounts and 
So the question is what volume of evidence? I mean, certainly if there's an, it, it, and what type of evidence you're looking for, because I think we did discuss, it's on the website and we we're gonna deliver this to you, but the website indicates um, based on various um, financial guidelines that there's that there's discounted rates that are offered. And so we can show you billing invoices mm -hmm. with individuals that would fit within the discounted categories. But the question is, given that this is actually a frequently used um, aspect of the practice, what volume of data and type are you looking for? But if you're willing to, if you're willing to rely on the statement, we are confident that that statement is true. And if you accept it as testimony, that we we prefer that. But we are absolutely willing to give you whatever evidence you're you're looking for. Um, I, I think I'm going to confer with the analysts and uh, Mr. Lazarus. Um, and just before we do that, um, I wanted to clarify. So the policy that's currently in effect at Lyft Wellness Group, that would carry over to uh, Pathways, is that correct? So the, the policy at Lyft Wellness Group of the sliding scale? Yes. Well, no, because the, uh, we would be accepting third party oh, yeah. reimbursement, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we we will give you as part of late file number one, as I understand it, the uh, the charity care policy for lift pathways to renewal. Okay. It, it was wasn't that correct that we were going to give uh, policies. Yeah. So so yeah, so we'll give this for the practice, and then we'll give them the written policy for, for lift pathways renewal. for renewal. Perfect. Okay. Um, we're just going to take a couple minute break. Um, we will stop the recording. I'm going um, So I conferred with the analysts and with Mr. Lazarus. Um, it sounds like if you're able to provide like data on utilization of the sliding fee scale for the past year, that would be sufficient. We don't need invoices or anything along those lines. Um, so would something like that be possible to pull together? Yeah, we could pull that together quickly. Okay. Dennis? Yeah. How quickly? Uh, the next couple, couple of days. Like one or two days. Yeah, I mean, okay. or do you want to? All right. No, I mean, that's fine. I, I only ask, I know they're short staffed at the moment in terms of the, the individual who would typically pull that type of data. So I just want to make sure that whatever we commit to time frame wise uh, on a late file, then we're absolutely going to hit that. So if you say um, today's Wednesday, will you be able to, to get it to me Friday morning so I could spot check it and then upload it to the portal? Yes. Yeah. Our um our biller is uh, overseas until the end of the week, so Dennis has been stepping in. So the person who does all of our billing and um, financials is she's been out of town. Um, so he's been covering for her for the past month. Okay, so it sounds like we could get you the complete late file um, by the end of this week. And again, we're doing that because we want to expedite the, the process the best we can. And so the quicker you close the record, I think the better for us. Understood. Okay. I think that addresses all the outstanding issues at this time. Um, since we finished early, uh, but we still need to allow for public comment at the scheduled time, we're going to adjourn for now until 3 p.m. this afternoon. Um, sign up for public comment will go from two to three today. I may log in at two just to say something real quick. Uh, it won't be on the record, but it'll, it'll just be sort of alerting the public to the fact that now is the time to put their names in the, in the public comment section. Um, and so basically what the public will do is they will write their name in the Zoom chat or, uh, during that hour, they can send an email to con2 
comment at ct.gov to let us know that they want to uh, participate orally. Um, and then at three o'clock, we will take whatever comments uh, we happen to get. Um, oh, as I mentioned earlier, OHS staff may have some additional questions after uh, we hear from the public. Um, we already addressed the late files and I will um, put that in writing um, probably either this afternoon or tomorrow morning, uh, what those are and when they're due, um, which will be by close of business on Friday. Um, and after public comment has concluded, uh, Attorney Rose, if you have any closing statement that you would like to make, we will take a closing statement at that time. Okay, thank you. So um, with that, we will adjourn for now and I will see everybody back at three o'clock. Thank you. Uh, welcome back and good afternoon. For those just joining us, this is the second portion of today's hearing concerning a CON application filed by Lyft Pathways to Renewal, LLC, docketed as 22-32602. Dash CON. We had the technical portion this morning, and normally at this time we would have uh, public comment, but we didn't have any signups um, over the break between 2 and 3 p.m. And it doesn't appear as though we have anyone else in the uh, Zoom conference room who may be interested in providing public comment. If that's not accurate, please speak up right now, and I, I'm I'm happy to uh, have you address us. Um, hearing none, I'm going to move forward and just uh, wrap up the hearing. Uh, Attorney Rose, do you have anything that you would like to address at this time? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, I wanted to note that um, we discussed during the break your question about um, when Lyft Wellness Group was established in the statement in the application that it was established in 2009. So in clarifying with my client, um, it, it, it appears that the Woodland Psychotherapy Group was the uh, original name of WIST. Uh, Lyft Wellness Group, which was still established, I think, in the 2016 or 2017 time period, and that the reference going back to 2009 was actually making reference to Mary Dobson's private practice that she operated as a sole proprietor from the time of 2009 in establishing what was first named Woodland Psychotherapy. So I just wanted okay. to clarify that for you. Thank you. I, I think that that came through for the most part in, in what Ms. Dobson was saying earlier, but I, I do appreciate the added clarification. Okay, thank you. Um, I do wish to note that we just had someone join us. Um, so I, I'm going to ask you again, is there anyone in this conference room who would like to provide public comment at this time? And Ms. Hi, this, yes, okay. hi, this is Randy Lehrman. And um, okay. yeah, I heard about this meeting and I came in to, um, you know, read um, a letter that I wrote in support of Mary Dobson and what she intends to uh, create. Okay, um, so we're happy to hear from you. Um, if you would like to make any additional comments, you are free to do so. We normally limit people to about three minutes. Um, but since you're the only one who, I guess, has signed up today, you could go a little bit longer than that if you'd like. <laughs> That's okay. I'm a practicing lawyer with two law firms, so I'm all over the place. But um, I, want, I, I really wanted to make a concerted effort. I actually got off a deposition um, to say a few words. Um, you know, I, um, Mary Dobson has been instrumental 
um, in uh, helping my son emerge from a very bad disorder, uh, like so many individuals in our uh, community. I've lived in Fairfield County for over 25 years and have seen countless children, adolescents, and parents struggle with debilitating and life-threatening eating disorders. Um, I myself struggled with one many years ago as a teenager, so I know firsthand how instrumental getting in there early when the kids are impressionable um, is, is in terms of overall recovery. Uh, had I had Mary's programs available to me, I probably would have emerged um, a lot quicker from the depths of despair. So many of my friends have reached out to me to talk to their teens and to kind of talk to them about what I went through. Um, and many of them are just paralyzed as to what to do to help their children and teenagers uh, who are falling prey to these deadly diseases. I was fortunate enough because someone had put me in touch with Mary early on in uh, my son's journey. Um, thus, our need for structured outpatient programs is, is huge. Having a place for individuals to step down to um, from partial hospitalization and intense outpatient would save many of my friends and their families from the competitive and continual cycles of emergency room uh, visits, hospital visits, going home, spiraling, because so many triggers are back in the home place and they just keeps going in a circle. Um, you know, it is really imperative in my opinion that Mary and her team be permitted the opportunity to save our children and our community. These eating disorders are insidious and they are so pervasive. And it is, I, I can't even explain to you how many times people have called me because I'm out front and center because she helped my son and now he's thriving, he's working. He's, I mean, I can't, I'll never be able to repay her. Thank you, Ms. Lyerman. And can you just uh, spell your name? It, I, I don't think we have it written down anywhere and I wanna make sure it matches, sure. <clears throat> excuse me, what we have in, in the Zoom. Sure, it's Randy with an I, uh, Lehrman, L-E-H-R-M-A-N. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, based on the comments made by uh, Ms. Lehrman, uh, Mr. Lazarus, Ms. Uh, McLaughlin or Ms. Rival, do any of you have any additional questions for the applicant? No. I do not. I do not. Okay, thank you. Um, now, uh, Attorney Rose, did you wish to make a closing statement? Yes, uh, and, and very brief. I, I really appreciate the the way the agency has uh, conducted um, this hearing, and and I'm really looking forward to giving you the late files and I, and and I uh, appreciate that when I said you know we're looking to get this off the ground quickly you said so are we and I, I just I really want to say thank you for that sentiment and um, I I just want to clarify if the record's going to stay open for another seven days to receive written commentary, um, then um, correct me if I'm wrong, but we might as well make tie the late file deadline to the same. I think we're probably get it to you uh, much, much sooner, but I just wanted to clarify that, well, if you're gonna leave the record open, then we might as well have until then to submit our late files. Would you agree that that's probably appropriate? Yes, that's a good point. I hadn't thought of that. And I, I do appreciate you bringing that up. Um, so as is usually the case, we we normally leave the record open for at least seven days for the public comment. So I'm limiting that to seven days. And if you wanna have until next Wednesday to submit the late file, that's fine with me. Okay. Um, and just to clarify something that you just said, <laughs> um, you know, that the agency tries to move through things as expeditiously as possible. And, um, 
that doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to approve this. <laughs> so I, I didn't I didn't want you to think that, you know, we're moving. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, you know, we're not looking for a quick denial, but yes, I get it. Um I okay. understood you guys have to go through the record and you have to take the time necessary. And um and I just hope that with what we've presented to you, you will feel comfortable. Uh, approving this and should you come to that conclusion sooner than later just know that we're here to accept that approval and get the programs going thank you attorney ross um with that uh, as i mentioned earlier i'll be issuing a written order uh, after this hearing adjourns uh you could probably you'll probably receive that tomorrow morning um but i have nothing further and it sounds like the OHS staff has nothing further. So thank you all for attending today. Uh, thank you to Dr. Bennett as well. I neglected to thank her for uh, her participation earlier. And um, a reminder again to the members of the public that they can continue to submit written public comment to comment at ct.gov up to seven days after today. Uh, this hearing is hereby adjourned, but the record will remain open until closed by OHS. So thank you very much and have a good afternoon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks all. Thank you. Have a nice afternoon. You too.